We need to get out of this, Lord God, but Pastor, give him the strength. Let him teach the word, Lord, and give it to your people. Just open up our heart and have a mind, Lord, and give it your word, Lord. We need your word, yes, to make it out of here to the Lord God. Bishop Hill today, Lord. Give him the strength in his body he needs right now, Lord God. Mom, tuck her, Lord. Scratch out your body hand tonight, Lord. Bless and keep us right now, Lord. Scratch it to give the strength from day to day. Watch over and protect us, Lord. Go with us to stand by. We thank you all you've done when you're about to do. Thank you. We praise you. Give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Percy. Amen. We greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The only begotten Son of the Father. Amen. The one that God so loved the world, amen, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe on him, in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, amen, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. And Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. And if I be lifted up from the earth, yeah. amen, he said he will draw all men unto him. Yeah. Praise the Lord. He said, if I be lifted up, amen. amen, I will do the drawing. Praise the Lord. That lets me know it's not up to me. All right. Amen. To draw anybody, amen, I must live the life. Mm -hmm. And I got to let my light so shine before men that they may see my good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. But it takes the Lord to do the drawing. Amen. No man can come unto the Father except they go by Jesus. And Jesus said, no man can come unto me except the Father draw him. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So nobody can come and receive this salvation through Jesus Christ except God put within them that desire. Amen. And draw them to the Son of God through which we can receive the atonement for our sins. We're grateful tonight. We just thank God for His grace and His mercy. Amen. Thank God for a mind. Amen. To keep on serving Him. Amen. To keep on living for Him. Amen. Realizing that the end result is eternal life. Amen. And all that matters in serving the Lord is eternal life. Amen. And once you receive eternal life, then everything else that comes along with that, amen, you'll be able to partake with everything that comes along with maintaining eternal life. You want to be in heaven? Amen. Just receive eternal life. Praise the Lord. And get there and everything, as the same song said, when the saints go marching in. Uh -huh. Amen. Lord, I want to be in that number. Amen. We pray that the Holy Ghost will glorify. Amen. The Son of God, as always, as we stand before you, we sit before you, and we come before you. Amen. Not by might nor by power. Amen. But it's by the Spirit of the Lord. And we pray as always that the Holy Ghost will take control of my lips. Amen. Take control of my tongue and my mouth. Amen. And as I open up my mouth, amen, it would speak for that which the Holy Ghost have given me that which to say. Praise the Lord. We don't want to come to you with excellence of speech. Amen. But we want to come to you in the demonstration and in the power of the Spirit of God. Amen. Because once you do it in the Spirit, amen, you will do it in the power of God. Because Jesus said, amen, when the Holy Ghost comes, you shall receive power. All right. Amen. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Praise the Lord. Amen. We want to, amen, by the grace of God, amen, to kind of go over and reflect and, amen, talk about concerning a subject, amen, that you don't hear often preach, amen, in many churches. Mm -hmm. But I do know there are churches, amen, that do speak concerning this subject. All right. Praise the Lord. It's a word that not too many preachers, 
Amen. Teach or preach about. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And somebody said, well, what is that word? Mm -hmm. Amen. We're going to go, amen, to the book of Romans chapter number 6. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter number 6, verse number 1. Romans chapter number 6, verse number 1. Amen. This will be a series, and this will just be the foundation. And then we will see what else the Holy Spirit will give us according to him receiving from Jesus. Amen. To give to the people of God. Romans chapter 6, verse number 1. What shall we say then? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound. That grace may abound. The Apostle Paul, he asks a very important question. What shall we say then? Mm -hmm. Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about that. Praise the Lord. Shall we continue in saying that grace may abound? All right. The letter, the, the three letter word is sin. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read a few things and as we go along, if you don't remember them, you're going to have to go over and watch the tape. Mm -hmm. I just give you an opportunity or a reason to go back and view what was taught. Praise the Lord. Because so many times after the word is preached and teach in the service of the Lord, mm -hmm. some people don't even go back, amen, to brush up their memory to kind of get up to speed like they say. Mm -hmm. Word of God is taught and people just, okay, I'll hear it and I'll wait till next month or next week to hear it again. Amen. But it's good to go back and revisit the word of God. Amen. That will be able to help you to build yourself up. Yes. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to read a few things. And like I said, now it's up to you. Now I have to write it down because there's just no way that I can memorize it in my head. Amen. And remember what I need to read. Praise the Lord, so I don't feel bad in having to write it down. No, sir. Amen. John was told to write it down. Praise the Lord. Huh? Either the angel, Jesus just then spoke to him and said, all right, as you remember, write it down. Mm -hmm. Amen. But as he spoke, he said, do what? Write it down, that which I speak unto you. Amen. All right, so praise the Lord. So shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? All right, now, when you think of the word sin, you think about disobedience. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but you think of the word transgression. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but you think about the word rebellion. Mm -hmm. So when you think about the word sin, you have to think about the word disobedience. Then you have to think about the word transgression. Then you got to think about the word rebellion. And then you can even add iniquity into that. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. But I want to read a few things that I felt that would be helpful to us as we continue, amen, in this Bible series. Number one, the essence or root of sin is selfishness and lack of love. The essence of root, the essence or the root of sin is selfishness or lack of love for God. Number two, Adam's disobedience brought sin and corruption into his heart and life. Adam's disobedience brought sin and corruption into his heart, meaning his mind, and his life. Number three, death enter into, death enter the world through sin. Mm -hmm. All right, death 
enter the world through sin. All right, now the death that I'm talking about is both spiritual and physical death. All right, All right number four, sin enslaves and corrupt. Number four, sin enslaves, E-N-S-L-A-V-E-S, -E enslaves and corrupt. Number five, sin is rooted in human desires. Sin is rooted in human desires. Number six, sin is a moral corruption in humans that oppose our better intentions. All right, again, sin is a moral corruption in humans that oppose our better intentions. Praise the Lord. So I wanted to read those things, kind of help us as we go along, amen, in this Bible series. Now again, if you was not able to follow me and write it all down, that's why you have a recording that you can go back, amen, because I'm not sure if I'll read it again. Hopefully I will, but if I don't, at least, amen, it's recorded on YouTube. Praise the Lord, and they told me once it's on Facebook, amen, it'll stay out there, and you can go out and view it, amen, even after the live show on tonight. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Now, when you think about sin, let's go to um, Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Romans 5 and 12. Wherefore, wherefore, as by one man, as by one man, sin entered into the world. All right, now Paul is letting us know that by one man, mm -hmm. amen, sin entered into the world. By one man. Now, I believe by now we all know who that one man is, and that one man was the only man that God formed from the dust of the earth and breathed in his nostril and that man became a living soul mm -hmm. all right and god gave him the name by the name of adam, adam. praise the lord so by adam mm -hmm. sin entered into the world death by all death. right now look what follows sin death all right death followed sin mm -hmm. all right so wherever you see sin what follows sin is death. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I said now, it's more than just spiritual death, but it's also a physical death. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. But when Adam disobeyed God, and Adam was cut off from God, that is spiritual death. Amen. But physical death did not come upon Adam until after 930 years. But God told Adam, in the day that you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. Surely. All right, now God wasn't talking about physical death. Physical death came after. Mm -hmm. But what God was talking about is physical separation between God and his creation. Man. Because remember now, sin will always bring a separation between any believer and any person between them and their God. Man. Let me say this. God will not condone sin, mm -hmm. but he'll forgive sin. Praise the Lord, but he will not condone it. All right, it is not something that God delight in. Sin brings a separation. And remember now, Paul now is going to say, finish reading that. Death by sin. And death by sin. And so death passed upon all and men. And so death passed upon all men. For that all have sin. All right, so after Adam said, death passed upon all men mm -hmm. for all have sin. Yes. Alright, now just go now to verse
verse number 19. Uh-huh. For right. as by one man's disobedience. All right, now you see now Paul is saying, uh, as by one man's disobedience. So I told you now, praise the Lord, that we just read, our sin can come into the world through disobedience. Yes. All right, so for by one man's disobedience. Many were made sinners. Many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one. So by the obedience of one. Shall many be made righteous. Shall many be made righteous. So Paul is showing the contrast between Adam's offense. Yes. Adam's disobedience. Yes. Versus Jesus' obedience. That's right. Praise the Lord. So because of one man's disobedience. Uh-huh. Praise the Lord. Many, many made were made sinners. Mm -hmm. All right. So by the obedience of one, shall many, shall many be made righteous. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So like I said now, sin is something that wherever you find sin, in order for someone to sin, there must be a disobedience. Mm -hmm. They must first disobey that given or known command. Adam and Eve disobeyed that given command that God told them that in the day, now God didn't tell both of them, mm -hmm. but what, what we know that God told Adam. Told Adam. But we know that Eve, amen, mentioned those words to the serpent. Yes. Let me know that she had prior knowledge of what God told Adam. That's right. Because when God gave Adam, when God told Adam that Eve was not around. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's right. Baby. But Eve had knowledge about the command that God gave unto her husband. And now we know now when they sin, mm -hmm. wherever you find sin, there will be corruption. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Wherever you find people living in sin, corruption will always follow. Yes. Now, I'll say this. Corruption is irreversible. Except by the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Irreversible. Corruption is irreversible except by the blood so in other words, if you stay in sin, you will be corrupted. Mm -hmm. But the blood of Jesus Christ, if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, even though you were born in sin, you don't have to stay in sin. All right. You can receive what? Forgiveness of sins mm -hmm. through the blood of Jesus Christ, meaning the atoning death and what happened on Calvary. Now, we go into this lesson some people will say well we're human mm. and we are is that right Amen. but just because we're human is that a license to sin no, sir. praise the Lord because we have come short of the glory of God, as Paul said, all of sin and come short of the glory of God, does that mean when we get in the body of Christ, can we continue in sin knowing that we was just born again? Sure. The answer, my friend, is no. You cannot live in sin and have grace at the same time. All right. You cannot have law and have grace at the same time. But remember this now. We serve a God that is wise. That knows the end or the beginning from the end or the end from the beginning. God knows all things. Now, does it mean when we get in the body of Christ that we don't sin? No, sir. No. But remember this now. Anyone that knows to do right and don't do it, to him it is what? It is a sin. Mm -hmm. So anybody that knows to do right but choose not to do right, to that individual it is a sin. Then Paul also said of 
believe in Romans chapter 14 or 13. Whatsoever that is not of faith is sin. So whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Now, John chapter number 2. John chapter number 2. John is right before Revelation. John chapter number 2. John chapter number 2, verse 1. And the third day, John chapter 2, John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. Verse 1. My little children. My little children. These things. These things. Right I unto you. Right I unto you. That he sin not. Are, what is John encouraging the believers to do? To sin? To sin not. John said, my little children, uh -huh. these things write I unto you that ye sin not. Uh -huh. In other words, don't sin. That's right. Now the reason why Paul said, shall we continue in sin, that grace may abound, God does not increase grace, or God does not give his people grace in order for them to do what? Continue to sin. Mm -hmm. The reason why God has given us grace that came through Jesus Christ is for us to do what? To overcome sin. Amen. To overcome those fleshly desires, amen, that is a part of our human makeup. All right. Now, when anybody gets saved, those desires don't just disappear. Those desires is a part of our makeup. Mm -hmm. And those desires will not go away until we die or until the Lord come and take the church out of the world. All right. So those desires are built within us. But even though we have those desires now, God has given us the Holy Ghost. Once we receive the Holy Ghost now, we have the power to resist sin. Yes. Now, if I don't resist sin, then sin will dominate me. Mm -hmm. If you don't resist sin, then sin will dominate you. Yes. Sin will take control of you. And once sin has taken control of an individual, sin will destroy them. Amen. And in the end, the only thing that comes behind, the only payment for sin is death. I just quoted what Paul said. Romans, I think it's chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So John said, I write unto the church. Yes. I'm writing to the believers that are baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost and declare that Jesus has become your Lord. I write unto you that you sin not. Don't sin. In other words, don't sin willfully. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, it doesn't mean that when you get in the body of Christ that you will not sin. But there are two types of sin, which is known as willful sin. Mm -hmm. And then in the Old Testament, they call it what? The sin of ignorance. Mm -hmm. There is forgiveness for the sin of ignorance. But there is no forgiveness for the sin of willful. Mm -hmm. Once somebody sin willfully, there is no forgiveness. None. Now Paul, as John said, my little children, these things write unto you 
that ye sin not. Mm -hmm. And if any man sin, we have an advocate. We have an advocate with the Father. With the Father, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the righteous. Now John said, but I don't want you to sin. But remember now, if you sin, mm -hmm. not willfully, because Jesus will not plead or intercede for willful sin. But a sin of ignorance. Mm -hmm. Something that was not premeditated. Yeah. Jesus is here. We have an advocate. Mm -hmm. Someone to go between us and God. Someone to plead to God and ask God to forgive us. Mm -hmm. I thought about the, the parable or the story Jesus told when the man came seeking and when he looked at the tree there was nothing on the tree mm -hmm. and he said now I will cut it down yes. because it was not bearing no fruit but the gardener said don't cut it down one more year. give me one more year mm -hmm. let me down it let me work with it, and if after a year there is no bearing of fruit, then you can do what? Cut it down. Mm -hmm. The one that wanted to cut it down was God. But the advocate stepped in and said, Father, give them or give me what? One more year and let me work with them. So Jesus is the advocate for the church. Amen. So when any believer sin, we have an advocate. But the advocate will not go or advocate on our behalf unless we do this. Look at verse number chapter 1, verse 9 of John. If we confess our sin. So Jesus will only plead or advocate for believers if we do what? Confess our sin. So if we don't confess our sins, then Jesus cannot advocate on our behalf. Mm -hmm. So anybody in the body of Christ, they got to confess their sin. What does confession mean? Confession just means saying what you did and basically what you're doing, you are repenting of your sins. Mm -hmm. So if we confess our sins, He is faithful. He is faithful. And just. Praise the Lord. God is faithful mm -hmm. and so is Jesus faithful. But if we confess, so if I receive what? Forgiveness of my sins. Finish reading that. He is faithful. He is faithful. And just. And just. To forgive us. To forgive us. Our sin. Our sin. So if we confess our sins, God is just. Mm -hmm. In our words, God is ready and willing to forgive a believer that is willing to confess their sins. Mm -hmm. Now, you can hold on to your sin if you want to. You can bury your sin if you want to. All right. Get me Proverbs, I mean, chapter 28, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 28, I believe it's verse 13. If I make no mistake, he that covereth his sins. He that covereth his sins. All right, am I correct? Is that Proverbs 28, 13? Proverbs 28. All right. He that covereth his sins. All right. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Now, if you are a believer and you want to prosper in the Lord, you cannot cover your sin. In other words, you got to be willing to acknowledge to God that Father, and you got to be like a prodigal son, he said, when I get back home, I'm going to say, Father, I have sinned. Mm -hmm. In other words, when I get before God, I am not going to try to cover my sin. 
sins. Mm. I will be honest with God and confess my sins to God because I want to what? I want to prosper. Amen. The reason why many people in the body of Christ do not prosper is because they don't confess their sins. They cover their sin, but expect God to prosper them. God cannot prosper anybody that willfully covers and continue to live in sin. Amen. He that covereth the sin shall not prosper. Mm -hmm. But that's not the only thing. Read on. But who so confesses? But whoever confesses and forsake. Confess means to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Did you do the crime? Are you going to say yes? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to say no? You want to be honest? Tell the truth. Mm -hmm. You want to prosper? Tell the truth. Yeah. Confess and tell what you've done. Don't bury your sin. Do not be like Achan mm. that stole the Babylonian garment mm -hmm. and the wedge of gold yeah. and a few changes of garment yeah. and went and dig a hole in yeah. the ground that was under his tent. That's right. Praise the Lord. The tent represents our natural house that we live in. All right. Now, what is it that you got going on in your home that don't need to be happening? Mm -hmm. What is it that you are allowing in your house as a believer that is an abomination in the sight of God that God is displeased with? Mm -hmm. Angel went and hid it in his tent. Nobody knew that he did it. Nobody knew. But who knew? God, knew? God did. So when inquiry was made because Israel lost the battle. Yes. Then Joshua recognized, wait a minute. How is it we won all those battles with the help of the Lord and this small group of people? You mean to tell me, praise the Lord, huh? Look what God did for us a few days ago. Mm -hmm. Now we are facing this small army of AI. Yeah. And our people have been smitten. And they have turned their backs on their enemies. Something is wrong. Something going on. So Joshua fell on his face. And began to say, well, Lord, why is it that you forsake us? Why is it that you allow your people to be smitten by or overcome by their enemy? Yes. God said, Joshua, get up off your face. Sin. The reason why now you are not able to stand before your enemy because somebody has transgressed, someone has rebelled against my words. Mm -hmm. Now, Joshua, do you want me to be with you? Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. You are the leader. Moses is dead. Moses is gone. Mm -hmm. Now, it's your turn. But let me say this to you, Joshua. If you want me to be with you, because I promise I'm going to be with you, no man shall be able to stand before you as I was with Moses. So shall I be with you. Mm -hmm. And my words will stay. But I cannot be with you if you don't deal with what's going on among my people. You got to get rid of that which defied the whole camp. Mm -hmm. You are the man to deal with it. Let me say this. God hold leaders responsible. Mm -hmm. God hold pastors responsible for what goes on in 
the body of Christ. Amen. And they must answer to God what they allow to happen in the body of Christ. Amen. God said, Joshua, I will not be with you until you deal with this problem. Mm -hmm. You want me to fight your battle? You want me to go before you? I do all of that. But you gotta deal with the problem, and the problem is sin is in the camp. I know. And until you deal with it, until you get rid of it, I will not be with you. Mm -hmm. The problem in many churches today, many pastors out there, and you see them on YouTube,
Now, I'm about to say something that, oh, you nobody don't, you don't have to agree with me. Mm. But I'm going to tell you this. Joel C is not called by God. I don't. All right, Mitchell.
sin, but still expecting God to prosper them. Mm -hmm. The recipe for being prospered by God is to do that which is right. Amen. So again, any pastor that sets up a woman mm -hmm. is in sin. That is a violation to the word of God. Because mm -hmm. no woman can ever be a pastor. All right, now. Come on, did you get me tired? So I'm coming back. Yeah. Just lay the foundation tonight. Go ahead, be sure. Get me Titus chapter number one. Titus. Titus. Yes, sir. For this cause let I be in Greek. Verse 5. Right. Titus 1 and 5. For this cause. For this cause. Let I be in Crete. Uh huh. That thou shouldest set in order. Set in order. The things. The things. That are wanting. So there were things that were needed to be filled in the church. Yes, sir. Every church needed an elder. Things that I wanted. Mm -hmm. Read on. And order elders, ordain elders in every city. Ordain elders in every city. As I am appointed thee. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Notice. Paul is a man, is that right? Yes, he is. And Paul said the same way I ordained you, Titus. Yeah. Where did Paul ever ordain any woman as a pastor or as a minister? It's not in the book, sure. Now let's forget about Paul. All right. Let's act. All scripture is given by what? Inspiration. Yes, sir. All right. 
in his Bible. Oh Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord.
But she saw it in the Bible, but still continued to teach. If you didn't know something, but you received the knowledge now, what are you doing with the knowledge you have received? Mm -hmm. I agree much. Now, I didn't know I'm not supposed to teach as a woman, teaching to men. But now you have the knowledge, why are you continuing sin? Mm -hmm. You know you're not supposed to be no women preacher. You know you're not supposed to be no women Tell 
tell your wife, it's all right to disobey God's word. Hmm. Bottom line, that's what you're telling them. Mm -hmm. And how can you be a man of God? Be led, Romans 8 and 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God continually, they are the sons of God.
So Joshua, mm -hmm. clean things up. Clean it up. Nothing can. Get rid of what's defiling in the camp. Mm -hmm. And when you finish, we'll be back in business. But let me know when you finish. Yeah. Joshua said, thank you. That's all I need to hear. I got to go to work. You see, Joshua just did disobey God. What did he do? He did just what God told him to do. If you're a pastor called by God, you will do what God tell you to do. Amen. And you ain't gonna worry about what this person got to say or that person got to say. My God, even if your own family don't agree with you or whatever, you still got to stand for what's right. Amen. You don't give in to your family because they and it's the word of God. You pray for them, but you keep on marching on. Amen. And don't let them stop you. So Joshua said, All right, everybody, come before me, the head of the tribes. Mm -hmm. And after inquiry was made, mm -hmm. it was, it was, it came to light that Aiden. Amen. Was the culprit. Yes. So Joshua said, Aiken, mm -hmm. tell me, Why? confess to God, but I want to know what you did. Because what you did, you didn't even put, you did not put your life in danger, you put everybody else's life in danger. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. A husband's responsibility is to take care of his home. Amen. And if he does not stand for the word of God, he leaves an opening for the devil to come in and mess the home up. So that husband got to take a stand. Amen. And he got to stand on this word. that's good. But all that they're accomplishing, 
I can do the same thing and even better. Praise the Lord. So the Lord said, now, don't you just look at that and say, it is good. Yes, it is good, but I can do the same thing and even better. better. So they can reach the same goals and achieve many things in life. When they serve me, I can do exceedingly, abundantly. I will take them to heights unknown if they stay with me. So the Lord said, Bishop, remember this. I said, thank you, Lord. So it's good to see them working. But it's better to see them saved. Mm -hmm. But we can't make nobody get saved, is that right? Mm -hmm. They got to choose to be saved. Yes, I don't know. Bacon said, I did it. Mm -hmm. You know what Joshua said? Why you trouble us? Yeah. Why you trouble us? Mm -hmm. If leaders ain't careful, we can trouble the congregation. Mm -hmm. If husbands ain't careful, we can be a trouble to our homes. Jesus' name. Amen.